Hey guys, okay, so this is gonna be a little bit different of a video that I've done in the past, um, but a few days ago, I posted a picture of my weight loss progress, and um, if you've been following me for any amount of time, really, like over the years, um, I have tried so many different products and uh, like programs and regimens and all this kind of stuff. I've read so many books and so many articles and all of the things. And um, after I posted that picture um, over this weekend, I've because I've lost about 32 pounds so far um, and I've still got a little ways to go, so don't judge me. But I had a lot of you guys asking like, what are you doing um, other than like taking products? So I'm not gonna talk about that kind of stuff. I want to give you guys some tips that you can start doing like, right now no matter what supplements you're taking, no matter what it is, I'm not talking about products, so this is totally generic. Um, but these are some things that I've learned. Um, hey, Bonnie, hey, yeah, and you, you guys, if you're all catching me live, say something, because I can see the number, but I can't see who's watching um, unless you say something. So, okay, so um, anyway, so after I posted that picture, a lot of you guys, and by the way, thank you for the encouragement. Honestly, that should be one of the tips is that it, it really does mean a lot to have like the encouragement, the support, the kind of like at a girl kind of stuff. Um, when you know somebody who is losing weight or in the process of getting healthy, whatever that may mean for them, um, or if that's yourself. And I wanna talk about that because a lot of you guys, um, hey, okay, oh, that's awesome. Um, so a lot of you guys messaged me wanting to know like, what is your secret, what are you doing? I mean, a lot of you guys know I take products, but that's not, listen, I wanna give you guys some tips that have nothing to do. <laughs> hey, hi Jeremy. See, that's the kind of encouragement y'all need in your life. Okay, so I have five tips for you guys on how I have lost over 30 pounds. This has just been since September. So right now it's February, so if you're catching this on a recording or replay or whatever, um, this is not a quick fix, okay? This is not some crazy radical diet. These are things that I've, y'all, like I've known this stuff for a while, um, but I haven't necessarily put all of the pieces together in one working mechanic, right? So there's also a book I'm gonna recommend to you guys here in a little bit that completely like blew my mind. I'm learning so much about the body and why certain things work, why certain things only work for a short period of time that you may be doing. So like a lot of people, do y'all remember like the celery juice trend and um, like the grapefruit diet and then there was like Atkins and all, there's so many different bandwagons and trends and stuff like that, um, that some work in the beginning and then it starts to fade out, right? They stop working after a while. So there are some things that I've been doing over the past several months that I feel like will work no matter what product you're taking, no matter what kind of lifestyle you lead, no matter how much weight you have to lose. Um, I have been on a lot of different products and a lot of different scenarios, um, recommendations. So I wanna give this to you guys. All right, so again, this is after, um, I, I was gonna hold the thing up to, to show you guys, but I posted a picture before and after picture um, I'll put it in the comments here of what 32 pounds or 30 pounds, I guess at that time looks like y'all, that's a lot like 30 to go to the grocery store and hold up 30 pounds of like flour. That's a lot. Um, so these things are really simple to do. Okay. So the number one thing that I was not doing that I feel like has helped me a lot this time around is consistency. Now, a lot of people are like, Oh, consistency. Listen, there is a big thing right now when people are trying to lose weight um, or really any health journey, but weight loss specifically, is that if something doesn't happen fast enough, we do this whole weird thing of like start something, stop something, start it, stop, start, stop, start, stop, stop right? And it's kind of, for me anyway, it was always like on Monday, on Monday, I'll get my crap together. On Monday, I'll start this new thing, right? Well, like by Wednesday, when you screw up, at least this is me, I don't know if y'all can relate to this, like let me know. But by Wednesday, I would screw up and fall off you know, my progress, right? And then I, for some reason, I dealt with this for years, y'all, it's so stupid like looking back on it, but I would, like on Wednesday, I would decide, oh, I'll start again on Monday. 
Okay, so that's the number one thing is that, think about it this way. There's only like, what, 52 weeks in a year, right? 52 Mondays that you have. That's, you're giving yourself only 52 chances to start making progress towards better health, okay? Now, versus if you were to say, I screwed up today, but tomorrow I'm gonna get started again. I'm gonna get right back on the wagon. You're give, now giving yourself like 364 new chances every single day. If you screw it up today, just start again tomorrow. Why does it have to wait until Monday? Is that like a weird thing? Am I alone? I always decided, oh, I'll just, I'll just wait till Monday. I'll start again on Monday. That's stupid. That's like all those days have gone by that then you kind of go into, um, at least for me, I went into like binge mode a lot. I found myself going into binge mode and that... That's a very dangerous territory for me on a personal level. When I was a young, young teenager, I went through binge, purge, binge, purge. I went through a lot of that. Um, when I first met my husband, I was I was right smack in the middle of binging and purging and binging. This is a, that's a serious thing. Um, and so that whole like binging, uh, I'll start on Monday and I'll just have a free for all, <laughs> whatever that's that's like the danger zone for me okay so i can get real heavy on that so consistency was the first thing don't start stop start stop all of that and remember this if you take away anything from this whole video one day one meal doesn't blow it forever you don't have to start all over again next week okay just because you ate something you didn't want to eat or like you screwed up or you ate too much or whatever, you can start like on the very next meal. The very next decision that you are going to put something into your mouth and eat it, you can make better choices that very moment. You don't have to follow it down that path. The second thing is, um, and this is something that I'm currently still learning, I'm not an expert by any means on this, is carbs and sugars. So I've had a lot of you guys message asking, do I follow a keto diet? And I think that um, for, a, for a time I was following a keto way of eating, which is very low carb, high fat, moderate protein. Um, if you're keto, okay, if you're following a keto way of eating, you're limiting carbs to around 20 to 25 carbs per day y'all first of all track your food like what you're already eating like keep a journal um in my fitness pal that's what i used at the app called my fitness pal and track what you're eating it is alarming you're probably eating way more sugar way more carbs than you think you're eating it was like it was mind-blowing to me when i actually tracked what i was really eating um so for a certain period of time i was doing keto um, in terms of low carb, high fat, moderate protein. Um, what I'm learning right now, um, I'm reading a book right now called The Obesity Code and I'm learning a lot about insulin. Now everybody's different, I'm not an expert, I'm not a doctor, I'm a medical prof professional, but I have been around the block when it comes to like health trends and stuff like that. And um, Insulin is a big thing. It's also a very individual thing. So you're going to have to like go by what you personally are feeling and you're personally experiencing um, based on what insulin levels do for you and what foods spike it and what doesn't. It's going to be different for, for a lot of people. For me, what I'm seeing and what I'm going through, I notice that when I eat lots of sugar and lots of carbs, it spikes my, I gain weight. And the short version of all of this is that the more your insulin, the more insulin you have, the more you're going to gain weight. <laughs> like, like it's, it's literally a cause and effect. There's a book called The Obesity Code. It is so good. It is so interesting. Um, it is, it's literally how your body's insulin is key to controlling your weight, uh, good or bad. It's phenomenal. It is so, so interesting. Um, anyway, so if you're, if you're on this live, say something, share this out. I'm not talking about any products or anything. Share this. If you feel like this will help others, cause these are just generic tips that anybody can use, um, when they're trying to lose weight the things that have actually helped me, I've lost 32 pounds so far, um, since September, it is February right now at the time of this video. So, um, if you or somebody that you know is trying to lose weight without suffering, <laughs> 
and feeling like they're struggling, um, this, this will be helpful for them. So the other thing um, about the low carb, lower sugar is that I personally found it, um, it was a little hard for me to get all the fats in to follow a quote unquote keto um, way of eating to make it super effective. So your body can go into fat burning mode. Um, and it's, I know like y'all, like experts past have said that, oh, eating high fat, eating real butter, um, eating beef, um, bacon, all of those things. A lot of people over the years have said, oh, that's bad for you. Get low fat, get diet stuff, get, you know what I mean? Non-fat stuff and butter that's not really butter. You guys, uh, that book that I just showed you guys, I personally believe, and that book confirmed it, that's why people are fat. <laughs> it's, we're not eating real stuff. We're not eating real food. Um, and we've been so groomed over the last several decades to think that um, butter and bacon and beef and actual food um, is bad for you that I think it's done us all a disservice. So I'm learning a lot, like I said, I'm not an expert on that, but what I'm generally trying to do, and I can't look, I, if I go into the whole counting things, counting macros, all that nonsense, um, I get burned out. Like I'm just like overwhelmed, I get tired of it and I don't stick to it. And the whole thing again, like number one is consistency. If you're gonna do something, you have to make sure it is simple enough for you to stick to or you know darn well you won't stick to it and the inconsistency is what makes people um, slide backwards, right? So the low, for me, what worked is, or what's working is lowering the amount of carbs and sugars I'm consuming, but not counting so hard and trying to do the whole balancing act of the macros, like of carbs versus fat versus protein. I can't, I can't mess with all that. The thing that's helping me is to eat more whole foods, real stuff, less packaged stuff, um, trying to watch the carbs. Like, do I really need um, a sandwich with two big thick slices of bread or can I get full? Can I be satisfied with a lower carb version of that? Could I make like turkey roll ups? One of my favorite things is like turkey and cheese rolled up with real mayo um, or mustard. I like the mayo that is made with um, like avocado oil or um, olive oil, like organic mayo. I love that. I've always loved that since I was a kid. Um, and to me, that is satisfying. Even like having a tomato in there is satisfying to eat that. Do I really need all that bread? No. Could I have like six of those turkey cheese roll-ups? Yeah. And you know what's crazy is that I personally feel better when I eat like that because I don't feel so heavy and bloated and just like a balloon when I eat all the carbs and all the sugars and all that kind of stuff, right? Um, so that has helped me a lot and to learn what insulin does um, in your body has, has been like super mind blowing. So one of the things that I'm learning now, which is the third one I wanted to share with you guys, um, has been something called intermittent fasting and with a clean fast. Now, intermittent fasting means something different to a lot of people. Um, this is not, I don't do the whole like go 24 hours, 48 hours without eating thing. I like food. I love eating. <laughs> okay. Um, so I don't, I don't want to do that to me. That kind of teeters on the binging and purging downward spiral for me personally. I have personal experience with that. I don't want to go down that road of, um, withholding food for that long for me. Cause I know me, I know myself enough to know if I did that, I would overeat when that, when that was done. Like I know for a fact I would. So like you have to know yourself and like your patterns, right? Your tendencies. Um, so what I have learned that works, um, that I'm, that I'm experimenting with, um, it works actually really well for my husband, intermittent fasting. So intermittent fasting, it, there's a whole lot of stuff about it. It's kind of trendy right now. Um, basically what that means is that you have a window of time that you're going to eat um, so for example, like 10 AM is when you would start eating. Like that's when your first meal would be. And it depends on how long of a thing you want to do for intermittent fasting. A lot of people start 
by um, doing their fasting window for just 12 hours. To be honest, that's probably not gonna move the needle on your weight loss, but it will at least let you tiptoe into the shallow end of intermittent fasting. So if you start like with your window open at 10 a.m., think about this, you have until 10 p.m. to eat. Y'all, that's a really big window. And like I said, it's just to kind of get you acclimated to having a window. Think about when your bedtime is. Um, the most effective intermittent fasting, um, like minimum, would be like 16 hours or 18 hours of fasting. So like, let's take 18 hours, for example, okay? So that would mean, and you will move the needle on your, on your um, weight loss if you're intermittent fasting for 18 hours. Like that's, it's gonna help a lot. And that would basically mean that, let's say you wake up you don't even have your first meal, a single calorie. Um, I'm, talking about, I'm talking about that in a second, but you wouldn't even have like a single calorie at all um, until noon, let's just say noon, right? So you would start your first meal at noon. Um, and then intermittent fasting. So basically if you're having an 18 hour fasting period, that leaves you six hours of an eating window, okay? So you would have from noon to six, basically lunch and dinner, okay? Um, and then at six o'clock, your window closes, the, the kitchen is closed, there's no more eating. But think about this, it sounds like, oh my gosh, 18 hours without eating. Y'all, you're sleeping for a big portion of that. So use your sleeping as like, that's a cheat, <laughs> okay? So time it around, if you're doing 18 hours of intermittent fasting, and you stop eating at six, if you're going to bed at like say 11, you're only like not eating from six to bedtime. And then when you wake up, do something else until your window opens in the morning. Drink lots of water, maybe get a workout in, go for a walk, do some work, get dressed, all those kinds of things. And then before you know it, it's gonna be noon. And then your window opens and then you stop eating at six. So that's basically intermittent fasting. So I'm, I'm tiptoeing into that now. That is not what I did to lose the 30 pounds though. To lose the 30 pounds, literally what I did is follow a really, really low carb, low sugar way of eating. I just considered, you know, a lot of people are like, um, like, oh, carbs, you know, good or bad, right? They have their thoughts on this. Here's the thing, if you know for your body that carbs um, and sugar change your insulin level to the point that it makes you either retain weight or gain weight. In my mind, I've tweaked it to where it's like, I treat it like a food allergy. If your body is responding in a negative way to a food that you are consuming, consider it like an allergy. Like if somebody was allergic to peanuts, would they really be like, oh, Peanuts are good for you, you should eat peanuts because I read in Woman's World that you should eat peanuts and Oprah says peanuts are okay. Dude, you would never say that because they're literally allergic to peanuts and they could die, okay? So people are dying of obesity. So I considered, if it's negatively affecting my weight, I'm considering that of something I need to stay away from as if it were an allergy. It's gonna be different for everybody though. Carbs and sugars, the, you're, all of our bodies are different. So you're gonna have to like really listen and, and get real with yourself. Are you consuming a lot of carbs and a lot of sugar? Are your favorite foods full of them? <laughs> if so, and you're having a hard time dropping the weight or moving the needle, like that's, that's probably one of the things you should consider. So back to intermittent fasting, one of the things that I just recently learned, um, so I am still doing the lower carb, I am still doing lower sugars, um, which for me helps a lot also because I have noticed when I eat lots of carbs and lots of sugars, it's like this, it's like this ongoing train that will not stop. Then all of a sudden I'm, I'm craving more sugar and more carbs. It's like if you give a mouse a cookie, do y'all remember that book? Um, for, for like little kids, if you give a mouse a cookie, he's gonna want a glass of milk, and if he has a glass of milk, he's gonna need a straw, and if he has a straw, you know what I mean, like that whole thing. When I eat a like meal that's full loaded with carbs and all this stuff, I, I want all the extra stuff. I want all the desserts, I want all of it, right? It's, it's again, that whole thing. So what I've learned is that um, with intermittent fasting, you can be a little bit more lenient on the types of foods, so like the carbs, the sugars, all that kind of stuff. You're not necessarily gonna have to count calories and that sort of thing, but 
um, it, if it's in your window and if you're not binging during your window, so I have to be really careful about that. Um, if you're not binging within your window, this will work really well for you. Um, intermittent fasting will. You don't have to do like super high fat and all that kind of stuff. Just lower your carbs, lower your sugars, and try to stop eating after dinner, really. That's the easiest way to think about it. Um, one thing I did learn about intermittent fasting is something called a clean fast. This was really enlightening to me. So I love flavored drinks. I love like diet sodas. I, whatever, I know y'all are gonna hate on me for that, but let's, I just, I like that. I like flavored drinks, okay? Um, it's like putting Mio in your water, that kind of stuff. I like that kind of stuff. Um, one thing I learned regarding insulin is that if it is flavored at all, I'm talking like even flavored coffee, they say, flavored teas, Mio, the little like crystal light, non-calorie stuff. Like I know all the whole, like, don't get on me about the chemicals and all that kind of Listen, baby steps people. <laughs> but if you're drinking that kind of stuff and it's zero calorie, but it's flavored, while you're um, like supposed to not have any kind of food or whatever during that period, you guys, the insulin thing is crazy. Even just the flavor hitting your tongue, there's some kind of something that happens in your body that makes the insulin levels increase and it, it like stops weight loss. It's pretty interesting. Again, it's all in that book, um, but I found that pretty interesting. So number four, is supplements that support you. I'm not gonna talk about specific supplements um, on this video, but I will say run from supplements that talk about suppressing your appetite. Um, you want to look for supplements that support your health journey. So you need vitamins, you need, um, like we actually just had a, a call with my husband's doctor today for his like well check from the VA and she mentioned um, like niacin. You need supplements that give you like good quality, premium quality ingredients and, and vitamins. Y'all, we have to, y'all are all adults. You know you have to take supplements, right? Y'all know that. If you're not taking supplements, you're you're doing it wrong. You're not getting, I don't care if the organic broccoli that you buy from Whole Foods that costs $12 for a head of broccoli, <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how great of foods that you're eating, you have to take supplements. The foods that we have today, at least here in the United States, they don't have the quality um, of nutrients in them because the soil nutrients are deficient. The water is, it's just different. It's different than it was 200 years ago when your great, great grandparents were farming, right? Um, it's just different. So we all, we all know, like don't argue with that. You have to supplement. Um, but the types of supplements, you have to really look, like are they supporting you? There's a lot of really great products out there. They have to support you. If you don't feel it, if you don't feel them working, if you don't feel better, more awake, like the neurons are firing in your brain, your gut health, y'all, you need to be going to the bathroom one to two times per day minimum. Did y'all know that? I talked to somebody last week. She said that she doesn't go to the bathroom. Y'all know what I'm saying. She doesn't go to the bathroom for like every three times for days dude that's not that's not okay <laughs> you're so gut health is a huge thing you need prebiotics you need probiotics you need all of the like digestive stuff digestive enzymes you need good quality supplements so the the easiest way you can tell is that when you take them they need to make you feel more alive. Like they need to make you ha feel like your brain turned on, right? Like like the cobwebs are out of your brain. If if your supplements aren't doing that, they're they're probably not absorbing. That's the biggest thing. I actually learned that recently that most supplements sold here in the United States at least, um most supplements only are absorbed like 2% to 5% absorption rate. Did y'all know that? Most supplements like capsules, drinks, most vitamins are only 2% to 5% absorbed into your body. Do you know what happens to the other 98 to 95% of those vitamins? They're literally going down the toilet. <laughs> You're peeing them out. They're waste. So you can kind of tell that in your own body if, if you feel better when you take your supplements. If you don't feel better when you take your supplements, there's like gut health issues, your absorption issues, there's some other stuff, right? But that was the big thing is, is find supplements that support you in your health. Um, 
but run from things that say it's going to suppress your appetite. Don't. You don't want to suppress your appetite. God designed your tummy to growl when you're hungry for survival purposes. Do not take things that trick your brain into thinking that you're not hungry when you really are, okay? You have to learn to listen to your body. But at the same time, you have to learn to listen to your body to the extent where are you hungry, like actually hungry? You know, you can survive for many, many, many days without food. Y'all know that? Or are you thirsty? Do you need to drink more water? I would venture to say like most of us probably need to drink more water, like amen and hallelujah. I know that that's me. Um, a lot of times I think I'm hungry and I think I need a snack when in reality, I just need a big old glass of water, like plain water without the meal and sugary things that make me crave cookies. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, um, okay. So that's, that was number four. That's a huge one. And then the fifth thing that has really helped me a ton, the final thing, um, is, to be super intentional. You have to set yourself up to win. You have to. There are there are people in your life that are probably discouraging you. There are people and things that are going on in your life like stressful situations, um, unplanned situations, things like that, that could be roadblocks, that could be obstacles on this journey for you. So it is in your control and your power to set yourself up with intention to make this easier on you. So what that looks like for me personally has been, um, that has helped me lose over 30 pounds since September. So just in five months, is to really um, plan it out. So I look at my calendar and this is actually really funny. I was thinking about it today. Do y'all know like people always say, oh, like after the holidays, I'll get back on the wagon, right? Well, newsflash, it's, it's gonna always, there's always gonna be a holiday. Do y'all know that? Like look at the calendar. There's Valentine's Day in February, St. Patrick's Day. There's something, usually there's like feasts and lots of food around St. Patrick's Day. In April, we usually have um, Easter, right? Like there's always something. <laughs> so, or it's the weekend. It's like fight night or the Super Bowl. Or like there's always something that's going to happen. So you have to take control. Do not be controlled by the calendar or like holidays or events that are going on. You have to take control of it. So something that has helped me a lot is to make make it easy and convenient um, in terms of like when you go grocery shopping, you need to have like a list of the foods that you love to eat that aren't like making you suffer. If you don't like celery juice, stop drinking celery juice. Like seriously, if you are suffering and you wake up hating your life because you're having to drink celery juice, stop it. Why would you do that? Like there's so many good yummy things that if you love them, and they support you, you can have that. So for me, like I have a list of things that I always love to have from the store. For example, um, one of mine is jalapeno poppers. So I get jalapenos, I cut them in half, de-seed them, put some cream cheese, some bacon bits, like real, real actual bacon bits um, in there and shredded cheese, put them in the air fryer for like 10 minutes. Dude, they're so good. And they're relatively low in net carbs. Um, that's a really yummy snack or meal for me. And I love, I feel like, I feel like I'm like eating something that I'm not supposed to be eating truly when I, cause it's so like savory. Um, so having things on hand such as, um, like water, that's really easy for you to grab. I mean, there are so many different things that you can do. I actually have a girlfriend who, um, she puts a pitcher of water in her fridge ready to pour. She has a thing in her fridge where she can put the cup under the in the fridge and it would pour water. But for her, it makes it easier to drink water when it's in a pitcher and it just pours all at one time. And it's super easy. It's fast and it's convenient and it's right there. And it's a visual for her. So like for her, she wants to drink a hundred ounces of water per day. And for her, she fills up her pitch a hundred ounce pitcher of water. So she literally can see it and she's able to track it. For her, it's like an instant gratification thing. You have to set yourself up for success, right? And make it convenient. If you're putting things in your fridge, such as um, there's a yogurt called Too Good Yogurt, like two, like T-W-O, um, Too Good Yogurt. It's a low-ish carb, low sugar yogurt. 
um, really yummy. Is it the best thing ever, like in terms of health and what? Probably not, but it's a really good option. And for me, that's something convenient that if I'm wanting something sweet-ish, um, but relatively low in carb, it's something I can go and grab. And those are really easy things. Um, like protein bars, I posted a picture of like the protein bars that I use. Um, I cut them up though into bite-sized pieces. I'm not sitting there eating a whole entire protein bar just because I have a craving for something sweet. I am satisfied with like two or three of those little bites, those little slivers. And the, to me, they're like little pieces of candy because they're so sweet. So things like that, if you find them, it doesn't mean you have to eat the entire thing, but set yourself up to just grab and be super, um, super convenient about it. Okay, so the two things I wanna leave you with, these are big mistakes that I see people make, including myself, um, that hindered me for a long time about losing weight, is you are not a dog. So stop treating food like a reward. Oh, it was really good today at work. I should, um, I should go get a dessert as a reward. Listen, you're not a dog, okay? So don't treat yourself with um, rewards. Likewise, don't treat like when you have a meal that you did not make very good choices during that meal, don't treat it like it, you were cheating on your diet. That's a big one for me. I'm like, oh, this is a cheat meal or oh, I cheated on my diet. No, you didn't. You're not married to your food. You did not cheat on your spouse, <laughs> okay? So it's not, stop making it a bigger deal than it already is. Just, you made a choice of the food that you're eating. Just make a better choice the very next time you eat. You don't need to wait until even the next day. You need, don't we need to wait until Monday. The very next time you eat, you can start making a better choice. The other thing is that progress is better than perfection. This is a huge one for me if y'all know me. Um, I tend to get hung up on like overthinking things and perfectionism and that sort of thing. And it's, it's held me back, I think in terms of weight loss for a really long time too. If I didn't have like a perfect score on my eating progress or my workout schedule, I would just say, forget it. I'll start over Monday or next week or next month or whatever. Progress is better than focusing on perfection. So if you are making little baby steps, make those baby steps. If you're like overwhelmed and like you feel like all the stuff that you're seeing online is like a fire hose of information, it's just too much. You have a lot of weight to lose um, and it's just like way overwhelming and it makes you feel frustrated and sad. Just start with one thing. Like pick one thing of, of like the five tips that I just gave you, pick one thing and start there. Maybe what you'll do is you'll, you're not gonna change the actual foods that you're eating right away, Maybe you're just gonna implement to just stop eating after dinner. Don't have that nighttime snack right before bed or whatever, right? One small baby step. And then when you kind of get the hang of that and you're like, all right, I can do this. That was easy. I can, I got that. Then add one more little like building block, right? Then see, okay, can I hold off on eating right when I wake up, can I wait like a few hours to break my fast, right? So remember your sleeping is included in the fast time. So, and then when you get the hang of that, say, okay, now I'm gonna start tracking what I'm eating just so I have a handle. Y'all, oh, did you know a lot of people eat like 250 to 300 carbs a day? Y'all know that, like it's, it's crazy town. Um, so just track and see where you are with your carbs. Should you lower them? I don't know, is it affecting your weight? So just baby steps along the way will help a ton. So. A lot of people, like when you saw my before and after picture I posted just a few days ago, a lot of you likes are like, what's your secret? What are you doing? It's, it's not one specific product. I have products that support me. Yes, I feel better. I'm not as hungry, um, but I, I'm not, my appetite's not suppressed by any means. My digestive health is on point, like seriously. That's huge, yes, but there's a lot of other things that I was doing over the years that were sabotaging that. I wasn't very consistent. I was eating way too much sugar and carbs. Um, I was eating like all hours of night, like seriously, like sun up to sundown and beyond. Um, and I wasn't being very intentional. I was like, start, stop, start, stop. And I was like, you know, oh, this holiday and oh, this weekend and all this kind of stuff. And I was just eating whatever. Um, so, and I wasn't drinking enough water. So those are the things that have helped me the most, putting them all together. Literally, like your body is a miracle, you guys. It knows what to do with the good stuff. So set yourself up for success and that will help you a lot. So I'm happy to answer any questions. If y'all have any questions specifically for me, let me know. Um, I will post the, the book. I'll post it um, in the comments. It is so good. 
Y'all are gonna love it. Your mind is gonna be blown. There's all kinds of like medical doctor stuff in there, but it's really easy to read and he's super, super funny um, in explaining like insulin and weight loss and why people are fat. <laughs> he literally says that. So anyways, he was like, why are doctors fat? You ever think about that? If doctors really know everything, why are there so many fat doctors? He literally says that in his book. It's really funny. Anyway, so I'll post the link to that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. Let me know if you implement any of these. I'd love to cheer you on because that's a huge thing. And I'll see you guys on another video. All right, bye guys.